Hey guys, I'm here with a video on macromolecules, which are basically the building blocks of all life. Now, a macromolecule is made up of smaller molecules called monomers. You put a bunch of monomers together, you make polymers, and polymers eventually make macromolecules, which are these large organic compounds. Um, there are four major classes that we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. In this video, the only one we'll hit carbohydrate, but before we do, Let's delve into polymers a little bit. Polymers are made up of monomers. Monomers are like the basic building block. And a lot of way I like to think of it is this. You know, if you had a brick, that would be a monomer. But if you put a bunch of bricks together, you would end up making a brick wall. And that brick wall would represent a polymer, the entire wall. So polymers are made up of a group of monomers and realize that polymers help describe what a macromolecule is. Now, realize that this does require energy and enzymes to do. And actually, it happens through a process called a dehydration synthesis. Now, when you look at the word dehydration, dehydration, hydrate is going to be dealing with water. So dehydration means to take out or to subtract water. If you look over here, what they've done is they've taken a hydrogen off of this compound and hydroxide off of this compound to create water. And that causes the compound to go together. Kind of think of it like if you had something sitting on the kitchen counter, an apple, for example. And it was to go through the dehydration process where water was being sucked out of the apple. The molecules would become more condensed or packed, or packed more tightly. Uh, that's basically what is happening here in the dehydration synthesis. So you have loss of water at every bond that's created between monomers that create the polymers in micromolecules. Now let's say you actually get the micromolecules made. You know, you've got energy stored within them. It took energy to make them. You can actually break down these bonds to release the energy through a process called hydrolysis. Now the word hydrolysis means hydro, means water, lysis means to split or or break so hydrolysis means the splitting of something using water and in this case we're going to split this macromolecule here we're going to add water and enzymes and it's going to split this bond and release it back into two monomers so you actually have a releasing of the energy that was stored within those bonds all right, let's get the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which the name implies, right? Carbo for carbon. Hydrate is water, H2O. Um, and that is actually the basic chemical formula. Now, if you look right here, the formula is CH2O times X, whatever it is. So if we said X was 3, then that would be 3C3, H6, O3. So they're always in this consistent 1, 2 to 1 ratio. Now this compound over here is probably the most famous carbohydrate you're going to learn about in AP Biology and this is the mole molecule of glucose. So you need to know that chemical formula. You also need to know what it is. Now the functions of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates give our body quick energy. They do act as storage of energy, but they're not very efficient in it. We have other macromolecules that are more efficient in storing of energy. And they give the body structural, structural materials it needs to build things. Um, so that's the main function is building and storage. Now the monomer is a monosaccharide, which I have listed down here. Mono means one. Saccharide means sugar. So a single sugar makes up a monomer, and the monomer make up carbohydrates and it's kind of like there at the bottom you put a bunch of sugars together to make an example of maybe a starch or a cellulose. Now one thing you do need to know is that sugars always end or most of the time end in the OSC ending so if you see the word glucose you know it's a sugar if you see the word fructose you know it's a sugar and if it is a sugar it is a carb okay so it's a good way to think about it and they're actually grouped by the number of carbons that they have this glucose molecule down here has six carbons and it is a hexo sugar and you can you'll see a little bit of that later on all right 
Now, some simple, com simple and complex sugars I want to mention. Monosaccharide is the simplest. That's like your glucose, which I referred to. Then you have your disaccharides, which are two monosaccharides hooked together by dehydration synthesis, where they've taken water out. And that would be like your Dixie crystal sugar here, your sucrose. And then your polysaccharides are a lot of these molecules hooked together by several dehydration sensors. That'd be like your breads, your starches, your potatoes, your larger, larger sugars. Now, how do we build sugars? We build sugars just the way I told you. We take, we do dehydration. So, if you see here, if we took, for example, glucose, which is over here on the left. And we took fructose on the right, and we took out a water, see an OH and an H to make the water. These two would come together to form this sucrose molecule, which is what we would call table sugar that would be found in most of our candy bars. So basically you're taking two monosaccharides, and you're getting one disaccharide. Remember, di means two in biology. Okay? Now, when we talk about the polysaccharides, um, that's many saccharides hooked together. You know, they don't take a lot for us to build that, but it, they release their energy really easily. Uh, that's why they give us quick energy. Think about it, if you eat a candy bar, a lot of people get hyper after they eat candy bars because of that sugar rush. Uh, but it doesn't sustain itself, so it releases energy fairly quickly. Um, it doesn't take a lot for us to break it to. to release those carbohydrates, release that energy that's in the carbohydrates, but they don't last very long. Now, there are the two functions, the energy storage and structure, there are some examples I need you to know. The first one is energy storage in plants is through the form of starch, and energy storage in animals is through glycogen, which may be found in our liver or muscle. So that's where, how it's stored, how these carbohydrates are stored. Structurally, cellulose is probably one of the most common molecules on earth, cellulose is a sugar that makes up the cell walls of plants. I hope you remember that from regular biology. And chitin makes up the outer covering of a lot of arthropods and fungi, such as this insect over to the left. Uh, it also could be used in surgical threads, um, the outer covering of, of a lobster or a shrimp, etc. Now, one thing I do need to bring your attention to when we talk about the polysaccharides, there's a diversity between them. And if you look at starch and cellulose here, they both look very similar. There's only one difference. You see where this OH is? The OH is on the bottom on this side, and it's on the top at this side. That's the only really difference. These are called isomers of each other because they have exactly the same chemical formula. This one is called an alpha glucose, and this one is a beta glucose. The beta means that the, the, the OH is on top, the alpha is on bottom. When the, the only thing you need to know about this really structurally, because it, whenever you got an alpha, it's easily broken down. They don't hook together as well in an alpha. The betas form a much stronger, stronger bond with each other, like cellulose, and they're a lot harder to break down. That's like why we can't break cellulose down very well. Um, and this shows you an example. You know, starches are easy to digest. Cellulose is hard to digest, even though it takes, you know, it's going to still take enzymes. It's going to take um, energy. And that's because the alpha is in starch and the beta is in cellulose. Um, now, the most abundant or organic compound on Earth, of course, like I said a while ago, is cellulose. Herbivores had developed a way to break this down. A lot of times they use bacteria, such as this up here in the upper right hand corner that's found in their stomach or maybe in their intestines like termites for example and are able to break down the cellulose these bacteria are which gives the herbivore the ability to break it down most carnivores have, don't have this and they're unable to break down cellulose we usually only eat cellulose if we want to clean out our digestive system uh, if you ever heard about eating, eating plant material to have roughage for example um, and I just give you an example here. Cow would be one that could digest cellulose cell walls. Uh, there's no need to eat other sugars because it actually gets the sugar from the cellulose that's breaking down. Gorillas can't break down the cellulose, so they're going to also have to eat fruits and other things in their diet. And, you know, as I mentioned a while ago, a lot of times animals that are able to break down cellulose are going to have some type of symbiotic relationship with 
bacteria that will help them break it down. Okay, I hope this helps you a little bit in carbohydrates, and I will talk to you later.